Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. Today's Saturday morning, April 13th. Hope everybody had a good week of trading. Let's take a quick review of the markets and then we'll jump into my trades for the week. All right, so uh, VIX popped its head above 19 briefly before retracing and settling in at 17.31, but that's the highest VIX print that we've seen since October, basically end of October, about the 27th or 30th uh, was when we were higher. So will this volatility continue? Well, that's the magic question, right? I guess it, it depends on a lot of different factors. You know, what's going to go on with Iran and Israel? What's going to go on with the Fed? I think the uh, the uh, Middle East war situation uh, was, was the bigger factor for the spike here on Friday in the VIX. But We'll see what happens, but the reality is we have, as premium sellers, we have some higher juiced up premiums, which is nice. Um, S&P, obviously, on the downside, uh, gave back all the gains that it's accumulated for the last month, basically. Uh, NASDAQ, not quite as weak relative to its recent lows, but still a big, big down day, especially Friday. Uh, the Russell, puking. Dow, puking. Uh, gold and silver rocking higher. Gold pushed new all-time high before a big reversal. Uh, same with silver. Uh, notes and bonds bounced on Friday, but weak overall. 10-year yield uh, stronger and a little pullback on Friday, settling in at 4.52. Oil, big reversal on Friday, kind of sideways for the week. Natural gas, uh, a little back and forth on the week. Soybeans. Bounce on Friday, but down for the week. Same with wheat. Corn sideways. Euro and the pound uh, really weak. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday versus a strong U.S. dollar. And then Bitcoin pullback on Friday to the tune of about down almost 5%, settling in at 67000 445. All right, so let's jump into my trades. So it was a, a red week for me. Um, my normal trades overall were down, net, net, down. Um, and then I just had, I had one big, just stupid, blundered discretionary trade that I'll talk about to you. All right, so uh, let's start with zero DTE on the AM trades, three of those. Two losers, one winner, minus 3K on those. Uh, in my challenge portfolio, which is my one DTE, my RICs, and my re-entry zero DTEs. So I look at uh, just the challenge portfolio together, uh, down about 10.5. If I break these down by the different categories, I've got my one DTE was green. Uh, three out of four trades, winners, plus 2,100. My re-entries, well, let's do one. Uh, on the one-to-ones, a uh, little bit red, minus 1,500. The three twos really got hit, down uh, 19. Uh, and then uh, just one day of power hour, and that was on Thursday. Yeah, the 11th. Uh, that was a winner. Uh, plus 8,500 on those. Uh, no Ricks this week. No Mahomes. No FOMC. Uh, my one DTE hedge. Uh, two winners, two losers, net red. <clears throat> I'll come back to that one. NDX. So NDX was red for the week. Should have been green. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Uh, on this one, I did have a bot error where it it picked the wrong width on my strikes. Instead of fixing it, I decided to let it go. And then we had a huge drop. And so I closed it out. And wouldn't you know it, it would have bounced back and been a winner. So uh, that was a that was a $2,600 loss that should have been a $2,000 winner. So, uh, but red on those for the week. Uh, my power hour outside of my challenge portfolio Get all these checked. Red for the week. Let me uncheck that one. 
yeah, minus 4,600. You can see the ninth and 10th uh, were, were pretty bad. And then I uh, had a little winner on the 10th there. And then the 11th and 12th were green for power hour. Uh, my PM trades, good. Just had two, uh, basically two trades, but they were good. One was the PM tranches that I do. Uh, so all of those hit for plus 4,200 and then a uh, PM up day iron condor for 3,000. So plus 7,000 on those trades altogether. My price action, iron condors. Four for four, plus 5,000 on those. Uh, my quad 41 DTE. So this is something that I just started testing. You can see I'm only doing a couple lots. Um, one winner, one loser. Uh, I'll put that on my trade plan if I like it by the end of this month still. Uh, quiet midday tranches. Uh, just one day, all five hit, plus 2,700. And then my re-entries outside of my challenge portfolio, minus 11K. No ricks. Uh, my O2 call calendar, two trades, one winner, one loser, small red. And then my 1DTE outside of my challenge portfolio, small green. All right, so that is zero DTE. Let's go to, I'll come back to that. Uh, Iron Ducks, just one trade. Oops, let's get rid of that. Get rid of that. Uh, just one trade, uh, minus 628. Uh, dynamic Butterflies. Yeah, no, uh, no closing trades, just one open. Dynamic Calendars, had a good week in calendars. Uh, only one losing trade, and that was a 3-5 DTE. All the rest were winners. A 3-6, a 3-7, a 4-5, a 4-6, a 4-7, a 1-2, 1-3, 1-2, 1-3, 6-7, and a 1-2. And that one came off the same day. Um, <clears throat> so almost 5,000 on calendars for the week. Uh, option selling got smoked out of a gold trade uh, so I lost 4300 on that had I been a little bit more patient uh, I'd still be in it with that reversal in gold that we saw Friday but could not uh, you know, hit, hit my exit point so just had to bail uh, so that was a $4,300 loss and then a couple other small winners in ES and MES and then portfolio margin uh, had to had a close to manage risk, had to close a shark for minus 5,000. Didn't want to hold that over the weekend. Small loser, small winner, $1,400 winner on a reverse vertigo, and then a small, small loser on a Humpty. So that is it for my trades. The only other thing I want to talk about is, um, let's go to there. So this is a trade that I took that was just selling puts in SPX. Not part of my plan, not part of any plan. Just decided that I thought I knew something. Just decided that I knew that I knew price was at a short-term bottom. Well, guess what? I was wrong. And I was wrong to the tune of 35,000 bucks. And so this is, um, you know, this is something that, I mean, my note to myself, I think kind of says it all one word, dumbass. So this is, this is something that, you know, I've been trading for 24 years now, and this is something that has happened more than a handful of times where I will be doing good, following my plan, trading my plan, making consistent money, everything's going great. And then I'll open the window to a little bit of discretionary trading. And that goes great for the, for, you know, a long time staying small, keeping my position size in check. It's actually enhancing the rest of my trading. Cause I'm scratching that discretionary itch, staying more in tune with the markets. Cause I'm, I'm following the flow of the markets and trading it and that's all going good. And then 
it, all it takes is one day where I'm not dialed in, I'm not locked in, and I go off the rails and do something stupid like this. And it's, it's happened, like I said, more than a few times. And so until I can trust myself again to not do something like this, I am, uh, I'm putting myself in timeout from any discretionary directional trades. So that includes futures, discretionary directional trades with options, whatever it's, it's, uh, I'm in, I'm, I'm in timeout. In fact, I haven't decided yet. It may be a permanent ban because I've proven to myself that for whatever reason, I have this little guy inside me who rears his ugly fat little head every once in a while. And, uh, decides he wants to be a gambler with size and something like this happens. So, um, anyway, you know, I, I share this with you for a couple of reasons, a, just because I share all my wins and my losses and my mistakes and everything else. And, and hopefully it, you know, if it helps one person who kind of struggles with that same time kind of thing, uh, you know, like I said, I've been trading for 24 years and the fact that this would still happen at this point in my trading journey is extremely frustrating. Um, but it is what it is, I guess. And, and so again, it, you know, until I can figure out how not to have that little lapse in judgment after being so good for such a long period of time, then I just, I can't, I can't do this because I just, I, I, I don't like that. I don't like $35,000 losses in one day in one trade for no reason, no plan, nothing. So anyway, if that helps one person, I guess it was worth a $35,000 loss to me. <laughs> you know, it's just oh, so frustrating. Anyway, um, that's it for me guys. Have a good weekend, uh, back at it this, uh, coming week. Back to being a boring, mechanical trader who makes money without stupid mistakes. All right. Have a good weekend, everybody. Take care.